or by Robin Gwaltney. Gwaltney Group. Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax Results and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. I'm Andy Brownell, News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM, Saturday morning with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. You doing okay? Good. I'm doing okay. The sun is shining bright over here in Reed's Landing this morning. Fantastic. Fantastic. Look, I think we're in for a beautiful day. We need it. I hope it's this nice next week because, as you know, next Saturday is our Gwaltney Group Customer Appreciation Party. Yes. So if you're listening and you have ever bought or sold a house with any member on the Gwaltney Group, even if they had been affiliated somewhere else at that time, um, that counts. Or if you think you will be working with a Gwaltney Group team member, because this party is for past clients, current clients, and future clients, and we are going to have a lot of fun things going on, great food, and wonderful prizes, including a grand prize Hawaiian vacation, hence our luau theme. So my son, who's qualified to win. <laughs> yes, he sure is. Because uh, he received uh, a service from you for buying his Listen, first home. Listen, your daughter is, is also qualified to win because we referred her to another Remax agent in another market. Oh. So they're both qualified to win. So you should have both of them there because this really ups your odds in going to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put that in writing somehow. If you win, you have to take me. That's I can put it in writing. <laughs> uh, so, so that's, so. So that's it's coming up this Saturday. Yeah, one week Next from today. Next Saturday, yeah. Yeah, one week from today. And so it's going to be 1 till 4 at the History Center. And anybody that's in our database will have received an email. But if you haven't received an email and you feel like you should be invited, oh, my gosh, please come. You know, we are a very welcoming group, as you know. So a big party Saturday, next Saturday, out of the History Center. That's fantastic. So and let's somebody. look for another day just like today. Sunny and warm, because that's <laughs> what we need for a luau. And somebody is going to win a trip, a vacation to Hawaii. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. So if do you have to stick around to the very end to find out if you no, want? Or? No, we'll, we'll contact. We're not going to make people stay all three hours. We, oh, okay. we get that people have other things to do. <laughs> they just have to show up to register. That's fantastic. all. All right, all right. Okay, so during the past week, I see headlines all over the place, more or less verifying what you reported a week before concerning the housing market and the real yes. estate market. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the thing is, is, as you know, I mean, for Pete's sakes, you work in the business. You understand the power of the media. And if we want to create some great big real estate crisis by having all the real estate professionals in town running around screaming that there's a great big real estate crisis and then it's backed up by the news people who have interviewed those realtors who are saying that then guess what then that's what you'll have but the fact of the matter is is there is no such thing interest rates are higher than they've been in the last few years but they're lower than they've been many many years okay so they're hovering around right around 5%, this is okay. What's happening because of the interest rates going up a little is the prices are not, I mean, I'm not gonna say prices aren't going up because they still are, but what's happening is houses are actually selling for what they're worth instead of for some exaggerated price well and above over their value, which is what we were seeing when the rates were so incredibly low. And I'll tell you just, I know it's happening here to an extent, but with my daughter in Duluth, they ran into situations where a dozen offers. still offer, multiple offers, yeah. A yep. dozen offers. On a so home. they really have a shortage of supply, you yeah. know, because that's what we're seeing is in the markets that have a bigger shortage, uh, definitely still lots of offers. Now, I did just have a, a listing that sold in multiple offers a few days ago, but we had three. We didn't have a dozen. I mean, typically when we're seeing multiple offers now, we're seeing two or three. And the reason is, is because people 
in my opinion, okay, I'm not the the end all know all, but in my opinion, the reason is is because those buyers that were so desperate to at least try to get it because who knows when they're going to find another one that they like this much, those people have kind of taken a step back and said, you know what, if somebody else is going to get this one, I'll wait for the next one because more and more are popping up each day, which means we're getting back to more of a balanced real estate market. Which everybody should celebrate. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. It's a good market for sellers. It's a good market for buyers. It's a good market for realtors. It's just a win-win when things can be balanced and they don't have to be chaotic and they don't have to be under pressure. Remember some weeks how we would spend time talking about all the buyer's remorse because people were having to rush into decisions, major decisions, and then having to pay too much and then regretting it later. And, oh, let's not forget get to say they waived their inspection because that's the only way they were going to stand a chance. You know, we're not seeing that. Now people can come in, they can offer what the house is worth, which it doesn't mean you can come in and offer 10, 20, 30,000 less than they ask because if the houses are priced right, they're still selling at what they're priced at. It's just that they're not necessarily going over and above it. Now, if if they're overpriced, then there is some room for some negotiation. That's pretty exciting to sellers, but, or excuse me, not to sellers, but to buyers. But the truth of the matter is, it's only because it was overpriced. You're still paying what the house is worth. You and I have talked about this a long time ago, the psychology of that. If you overprice your home, it can actually backfire on you. It can absolutely backfire because what happens is if it doesn't sell, now now our average days on market is hovering around 24, 28, something like that. And if it doesn't sell in that time and it's still sitting there, then the buyers are thinking, oh, what's wrong with that house? And if it sits and sits and then they eventually have to do a price reduction, you kind of just turn it into distressed merchandise. So that's what we really have to avoid doing. And you still run into people who you have to convince that that's a bad idea. (laughs) Always. You always will. (laughs) And you know, the thing about real estate, I'm sure it's not different in any other profession. I know that there are plenty of Mayo doctors that have patients that come in and say, you know, I think I should take this medicine because I saw (laughs) a commercial on TV and it says that I should take it, you know, or whatever. And we will always run into people who know more about real estate, at least in their mind, than we do. And I'm just very respectful because I am, I'm always going to value everybody's opinion. But typically at the end of the day, I can convince them that I do know a little bit about this business and maybe even a little bit more than they do. And it always seems to work out. Well, um, so much of it is psychology, isn't it? That Oh, yeah. You know, I I laugh. I joke. I say, which hat am I wearing today? You know, is am I the (laughs) am I the marriage counselor today? Because this one wants this house and this one wants that house. Or am I the, um, you know, whatever. It's it's always something. But it's fun. I mean, it's it's what I love about my job. Are you detecting amongst the people buying and selling a reflection of the balanced marketplace out there? I, what I'm getting at is, are, are people a bit more calmer about the whole yes, process? Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what's happening is people are starting to get back to like, okay, real estate is a process. We will have to identify the right house. We will have to make sure that we're working with professionals that can give us the best guidance, you know, that being both the realtor and the lender, you know, they want to make sure that they're in good hands and they know they can take a deep breath and with guidance, you know, start the journey and find the right house, negotiate it, pay the right price, and in the end, feel really good. One number that you mentioned earlier is still amazing to me that it's now a 24-day on-market cycle. It's, yeah, Perhaps. I think it's either 24 or 28. I, I wanted to be sure of that this morning, so I okay. had read about it, but it's, it's you know, less than 30. Less than 30, right. So when you and I started doing the show a few years back, yeah, it, it was more like two months. Yeah, 60 to 90. 
Yeah, it was normal. Absolutely. That was normal. That was normal. And so what's happening now is there's always an adjustment period with everything. So as people are realizing, oh, phew, it's not just me whose house didn't sell the first weekend. The neighbors have also been on the market for three weeks. This is good. You know, so as people adjust and realize, okay, there's nothing wrong with my house. Nothing's happening bad. It's just this is the way things are now, you know, yeah. and then as soon as we can accept that, it's just back to status quo. I know I've used this example before, but I think it's such a prime. I think it's a really good example. You know, when COVID first hit us, oh, my gosh, we were all just broadsided by it. And life stopped, basically it came to a halt. I remember six weeks oh, not leaving my house. Right. And then it was just the learning and the adjusting and the more information that came at us, and of course the the shots helped and the boosters and all of that, but now it's like, okay, shoot. You know, when somebody says, oh, I have COVID, it's not like, oh my God, I hope you don't end up in the hospital. I hope you don't die. And I'm not saying that can't happen. I don't, please, I'm not underestimating right. it or anything like that, downplaying it, but I'm saying we're a lot less nervous about it now because we're seeing the statistics and we're understanding that because we've been vaccinated, because we've had the boosters, because our antibodies are high, maybe not high enough to fight it off, but chances are it's not going to be that big of a deal. So now it's more we're accepting, right? So now we yeah. can travel again. We can go back to having people over. We can just, and it's just becoming the norm and i think i even read something that maybe i'm wrong but that kids aren't going to even have to stay home from school now if they have covid no the cdc changed the requirements that it used to be if you had contact with somebody then they would quarantine the kids anyway but now they're not oh, the oh so it's the kids that have been contacted if they have t if they test they still have to stay home yeah, they're positive. Okay. And, they, and yeah. I think the deal is they've changed it to five days instead of 10. They, okay. It's all been loosened up quite a bit. The but, but that's my whole point. It's because we're we're getting comfortable. We're, we understand that this is now what it is. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see in the real estate market. People are like, okay, all right, it's 30 days. My house hasn't sold yet, but I'm okay. It's probably going to sell any time now because I realize, you know, this is what's average, right? Well, I imagine part of that is that the buyer ends up saying, okay, I can go, I like this house, but maybe I'm going to see two more homes before I come back and decide whether I want to put an offer on that house. You're, bingo. That's exactly it. That is exactly what's happening. <laughs> I should get the Hawaiian vacation price just for that answer. No, no, not quite, but <laughs> maybe a bunt cake. <laughs> I'll make sure okay. I hook you up with something. You just show up. You'll have a prize, I promise. <laughs> All right. We'll take a break, uh, a quick break and return with more with Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Are you worried about maintaining your lifestyle in retirement? Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Andy Brownell, Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results with us, of course, as we're discuss the local and regional real estate market which is now more of a balanced market so for a minute there i thought i was going to be uh stepping out of my radio role and into tv because i got a call to come and do this big tv show about real estate oh, yeah. oh we oh yeah true story and they're like oh you have to come we want you to do this reality tv you know, oh, whatever no. oh yeah no true story it's called the american dream and it's going to be broadcasting on amazon fire tv and abc i don't know really? all this stuff Okay, so then what it really is is a glorified marketing thing because they told me that for five minutes on air, I would I would pay them $1,800. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to stick to my radio gig. I, I kind of like it. I, I've, got, I've built a great relationship with Andy, and we have a lot of, lot of people who follow us. And, and I don't got to pay that kind of 
kind of money to be on this show. Oh, my show. gosh. <laughs> it yeah, would have been so, kind of fun if it was for real, though, that you yeah, get to yeah. do, you know, have somebody with you as you do your job. Okay, but seriously, those shows drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, people say, oh, do you watch all the HGTV and all those? And I'm like, oh, oh that yeah. stuff is so not real. You know, that is not the way it really works. So, no, <laughs> I just so you know, I don't watch them. And I'm not going to star in one anytime soon. Okay, we're safe. Good to hear. <laughs> we're just going to stick to this gig Good right here. Stick to doing the radio and selling houses. So the one thing we keep talking about is interest rates. And and I know there's some, you know, who knows what will develop, but some fairly positive news concerning inflation since we talked last that there are some small, modest drops. It's still high, mm-hmm. but it's not. it doesn't seem to be going higher, which is good news. It's kind it seems like it's kind of uh, stabilizing. It does. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed the gas price is going down, down, down. So well, that's been pleasant. That's largely the reason for the overall number stabilizing, I think. Exactly. Drop, exactly. Yeah. I agree. But uh, so that means perhaps we're seeing stabilization in interest rates as well, because they're still, what, right around five, more or less? Right. Right around five. And let me just. All right. I think I have some. St- I think I actually have some numbers here. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, here's something that I read on. Um, so the mortgage rates back up five percent, but the market is stabilizing, and this is coming from uh, Freddie Mac's chief economist. Okay, so average now average is nationwide, just like they say average gas is four dollars a gallon. We both we all know we're below that here, but average on a thirty year fixed rate is five point two two. Okay. And last week it was 4.99. So it dropped and then went back up a little. Yeah. Um, the 15 year fixed is average 4.59. And last week it had been down to 4.26. And the five year adjustable rate, that one didn't change as much. It's averaging now at 4.33. And last week it was 4.25. So, I mean, a little bit, I want to talk, I guess some real numbers. So let's just say um, you locked in this week and you were able to get 5%. And let's say you're going to borrow $300,000. Yep. You're going to pay $1,610. Okay. And this is for your um, mortgage, for your principal and interest. Okay. Okay. So you're going to, at 5%, you're going to pay... 1610 Now, let's just say that it goes up to 5.5. That freaks people out because they're like, oh, my gosh, the rates are up a half a percent. Well, just so you know, that means your payment's going to go from 1610 to 1703 So basically well, 93 bucks. Okay. Well, that puts it in perspective right there. Okay. So... Or 97 bucks, my bad math. Okay, 97 <laughs> bucks. So, 100 bucks. So, yeah, I mean, 100 bucks is 100 bucks. I mean, I'm not saying it's nothing, but it's 25 bucks a week. Okay, so 25 bucks a week, it's going to cost you more. It didn't make it so now all of a sudden you can't afford to buy a house. You might not be able to afford within your budget that expensive of a house. You might have to buy something less expensive, but. Overall, you could, home ownership is still quite affordable. Or you could drop Netflix. Or you could drop Netflix. <laughs> or cable. My God, my cable bill. Like, I open it up. Uh, I'm like, are you kidding me? This is crazy. It is crazy. I agree. Oh. Uh, now, when you put it in terms of a three hundred thousand dollar home. Yeah. Well, a actually, three hundred thousand dollar loan. Yeah. So, so that's, you're with a down yeah, that's payment, the part you're, right? Yeah. So you could be if talking you're about two fifty. Yeah, if you're borrowing two fifty, your payment would go from thirteen forty two to fourteen nineteen. Okay. So eighty something bucks. Right. You know, so it's well, gonna increase, but not like direct when you say a half a percent, it just people think they're paying just a whole bunch more a month. And yeah, it's a little more. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but don't panic. I think, well, yeah. um, and then there's those adjustable rates. Yeah. So we talk about budget. Let's figure out a way. Let's figure out a loan product and the right price house so that you can stay within your monthly budget because really that in the end is what matters, right? Yes, it does. The other aspect of this that I was thinking about is 
at sixteen to seventeen hundred dollars a month for the three hundred twenty thousand dollar home or whatever it is after your down payment's factored in. Yeah. If I'm going to rent that place, I'm paying <laughs> three grand a month. Exactly. Exactly. And rent, you know, we've talked about this, but rent in Rochester is comparable to rent in the Twin Cities. I mean, oh, Rochester yeah. rents are really high. And I know that um, there are some newer upscale apartment buildings where people are paying $5,000 oh, yeah. a month in Rochester, Minnesota to pay rent. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, if you want to pay $5,000 a month, you can have a really nice house. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have to take a break already, so we'll come oh back with more okay. with Robin Gwaltney. Gwaltney Group Remax results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Exactly. And rent, you know, we've talked about this, but rent in Rochester is comparable to rent in the Twin Cities. I mean, oh, Rochester yeah. rents are really high. And I know that... Um, there are some newer upscale apartment buildings where people are paying five thousand oh, dollars yeah. a month in Rochester, Minnesota, to pay rent. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, if you want to pay five thousand dollars a month, you can have a really nice house. Oh yeah. Okay. We have to take a break already, so we'll come oh, back gosh. with more okay. with Robin Gwaltney. Gwaltney Group Remax results on News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Save big money in Menards with 11% off. Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax results and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. All right, Robin. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. Um, we've been talking about the marketplace, how it's stabilizing, becoming more balanced. And uh, I guess that, does, but that doesn't translate into home prices dropping. Home prices are still going up. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, whether you are a potential home buyer, seller, I'm sure you're asking that question. Are the home prices going to fall this year? I know everybody wants to know. I, people stop me at Sam's Club that I don't even know and say, Robin, <laughs> is, the, is the market going to crash? I'm like, no, it is not. So I'm very happy to explain to them why and to explain to the listeners why. You know, we've gone down, but let's just, let's, we've gone over it, but let's just break it down to what is happening, okay? So what are the experts saying about where prices are headed and why? Does this matter? In 2021, home prices, as we all know, appreciated very quickly. One reason why was, of course, you can tell me, Andy, the record-breaking low mortgage rates. Oh, my right? gosh. Free money almost. Free money. Free money, right? So as a result of that, there were more people looking to buy houses than there were ever. I mean, people were looking at second homes. They were looking at VRBO homes. They were looking at lake cabins. I mean, whatever they could get their hands on because they wanted to take advantage of what was basically free money. Price, price appreciation averaged 15% for the full year of 2021 over the year, you know, year over year over 2020. With pockets so, of I mean, much higher, yeah. Yeah, but that's average, okay, right, because right. so normally pre-pandemic, that average would be like 3.8%. So it's still almost five times, so at least four point something times as much. So it was crazy. And that- Unnatural. Yeah, unnatural and couldn't stay because if it did stay, then it would be tough for most people to ever, you know, be able to buy a house. So yeah. we have to be really happy that this is all- you know, much more moderate. And this year, the home price appreciation is slowing, but prices are not dropping, okay? Yeah. So according to the latest forecast, experts say that on average, nationwide, price appreciation will still roughly be, so if I just told you it was 15% in 2021, what are you going to guess, Andy, that it's going to be in 2022? I'm going to take a stab at 5%. 10. Still, oh, they no. appreciate that it's going to be roughly 10% appreciation. It's still so crazy, then. It's still very good. It's a Real estate is a great investment, people. I mean, 
I'm going to say it. It's my it's my um, tagline, but your home is the bank account that you can live in. It really is. It provides you shelter. It builds you equity. It helps you build wealth for retirement. I mean, if you have the ability to be buying a house, oh my gosh, please call me and let me help you do that because it'll be the best decision you ever made. It's not like the boat. You know, they say that the day you buy your boat is your happiest day of your life until the day you sell it. Then you realize that's the yeah. happiest day of your life. <laughs> but that's not the same with the house. Uh, oh, boats are money pits. Oh, boy. My husband. If you ever want to bring up a sore subject with him, bring up the time that I bought a boat without consulting him. Oh, we won't go into that. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And um, one, one question I did have before we run out of time here really quickly. We were talking a little bit about rentals before we ended the last break. And are you seeing less purchasers pursuing investment property, residential residential property now? And I, you what, know, is, is that freeing up more homes for the average home buyer to okay. get a hold of? Yeah, it's a great question. There were always real estate investors prior to all of this. And there will always be real estate investors. But what we saw in those last few years is everybody became a real estate investor overnight. And so a lot of those real estate investors that were buying things to VRBO or to rent to their sister or to whatever, a lot of those definitely have dropped off because now with the mortgage payment being higher, it's just not as lucrative. But it certainly is not going to stop people from becoming real estate investors. And there are plenty of them out there, and there always will be. Oh, yeah. So whether it's just the only house you... I mean, we're all real estate investors if we own a house. But, you know, that number is going to continue to grow. But I think we're not going to see all those newcomers buying extra houses. Not for now. Not for now. Okay. Not for now. Well, if you want to... Take the step and pick my brain. Anything you want to know about real estate, feel free to call me. Honestly, I love to talk about it. You can probably tell I'm extremely passionate about real estate. <laughs> and that phone number is 507 259 4926. And that's to me directly. And we have a large team of awesome agents who are all willing to help. So give us a call and let us help you. And don't forget about the big party next Saturday at the Olmstead County History <laughs> I'll Center. remind everybody next Saturday morning. Okay. But this week our agents are going to be busy reaching out to their clients and again, if you're listening and you didn't get an invite, show up. It's perfectly up. fine. If you feel like you're a future client of the Gwaltney Group, we'd love to have you there. Fantastic. Okay, Robin. We will talk to you again next Saturday. Thanks so much. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye. All right. Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax Results. News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. This is... In manufacturing, even the smallest advantages can make a world of difference for both your customers and your bottom line. At MSC Industrial Supply, we have more than 75 years of experience improving metalworking operations from start to finish, providing the latest tools from trusted brands and innovative solutions that drive productivity and reduce costs. From planning to milling to finishing and more, MSC Metalworking Specialists are ready to help you every step of the way. How can we make you better today? Learn more at mscdirect.com.